In 2016, my husband Lucas and I bought our first home together in Los Angeles, California. The property was nestled in the Santa Monica Mountains, not far from the world-famous Hollywood Boulevard. Soon after, we heard of the Theodore Payne Foundation and we joined their native plant garden tour. We met people planting water-wise gardens full of native plants and we found them abuzz with pollinators and birds. We were hooked. We joined forces with a passionate native plant gardener, Ben Oswald, and we began to transform our little hillside. The garden was overshadowed by eucalyptus trees, which did not allow any native plants to grow around them. Our landscaper, Ben, persuaded us that these Australian imports had to go. We also pulled out all the invasive English ivy and water-hungry lilies. When we were done, the hillside looked devastated. I was concerned that we had made a terrible mistake. But Ben was upbeat and he started planting. While we waited for our first native plants to take, we began to reimagine the hillside and work on the hardscaping. We wanted to enjoy the entire garden, so we started to put in retaining walls, rock stairways and paths, and eventually ran a ring around the hillside. At the bottom of the property was a magical spring-fed stream. The city treated the stream like a drain and directed road runoff into its pristine water. During the winter rains, this would turn the stream into a raging, muddy mess, carrying precious water out to sea. This is what it looks like when adults play in a sandbox. <laughs> we worked to mitigate this, creating planting beds in the stream to help reabsorb the water and give the frogs a place to hide. After a few years, we were joined by a new landscaper, Gail Butensky. The whole process over the next few years was kind of haphazard, but we kept at it. Whenever we finished building a stone bed, Gail would have a look at it, decide what plants would work best, and give me a long list. I would sit down and look them up. This was my first garden, and it was a huge learning curve. For the most part, the plantings were remarkably successful. The native plants needed very little care. And after the first year, watering the plants by hand just once a fortnight was sufficient. Now, when we come down here and look up at the house, it's hard to believe that most of this garden is only eight years old. In 2022, our efforts were rewarded when our garden was included in the Theodore Payne Foundation Native Plant Garden Tour. A few years after we moved to Los Angeles, my husband was offered a job in Cincinnati, Ohio. We went to Ohio looking for an apartment, but instead we found a rare architectural gem, the Gerald and Beverly Tonkins House, designed by America's greatest architect, Frank Lloyd Wright. Built in 1954, the Tonkins House had been in the Tonkins family for over 60 years. So, very excited. Yeah. We bought the Tonkins house impulsively and moved in knowing very little about Frank Lloyd Wright. Hello. And nothing about historic homes. Within a week, the roof leaked, and within a month, we were embroiled in a massive restoration project. With the Tonkins house covered in a huge barn, we were now homeless. 
we were saved by a neglected 19th century cottage on the grounds. We renovated the cottage and moved in as a temporary measure, but it was to serve as our home for several years. The cottage sat on a featureless grass hill where 150 years of farming and mowing of lawns had dissolved any contours. Inspired by our success in California, we decided to create a garden of native Midwestern plants. Jacob Thompson, a young landscaper with a passion for organic farming, took on the project. The first thing Jacob did was attack the thickets of honeysuckle, which characteristically rimmed the property. It was hard and controversial work, with some neighbors objecting to the loss of privacy as the cover afforded by the hedge disappeared. But we plowed on and planted native trees along the perimeter as soon as we could. Then Jacob and his brother Luke tore up the hillside, reworking it to have ridges which would hold water, adding rocks of local stone as visual anchors, and creating the beds where we could plant perennials. We began to map out where the legacy trees might stretch their limbs and where a meadow could grow. Our very first plantings of native perennials were at the front gate. This patch became our laboratory to experiment with plants and work out what might prosper and what might be eaten by the deer. It also gave our neighbors positive inspiration that a garden planted with natives can work and be absolutely beautiful in a suburban setting. The cottage garden was still a work in progress when the roof of the Tonkins house was finally repaired. It was time to stop hiding from the greatest challenge of them all. How to design a fitting garden for an architectural gem by the great Frank Lloyd Wright himself. We started by closely studying the Tonkins house. Wright had set the house very close to the eastern boundary of the property, giving it the best vantage point to look out down a ravine and across to hills which were still farmland at the time. Meanwhile, my engineer turned businessman husband Lucas was building a model of the Tonkins house that was accurate block for block. Around the same time, Lucas made another discovery. The original design for the Tonkins house had never been completed. Wright's original design included a large patio and a lanai, enclosed by a dramatic 17-foot high wall, anchoring the house to the hill. At the bottom was a swimming pool, all of it adding to the effect of the house cascading down the slope. As soon as we saw the design, we immediately felt that it was critical to complete the building as Wright had originally envisioned. Like many of Wright's buildings, the design is much more detailed at the core and less ornamented at the extremes. We intend to extend the overall logic of the architectural design into the landscape plan with more formal plantings close to the house and bigger trees and perennials towards a wilder perimeter. The path begun at the cottage will continue around the Tonkins house, stopping at main vantage points from where a walker may stop to admire the house. In acknowledgement of Wright's love of prairie plants, we will add a small prairie full of the perennials which have been so successful at the cottage. With these blooms, those first seeds planted in Hollywood, California, will have come to fruition in a garden around a house designed by Frank Lloyd Wright in Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs>